All right, so here we're looking at simple trusses, question number one. So we're given the truss with a pin and a roller, a 26.565 degree angle, and a force at pin C of 20 units. So what we're going to do is look at the free body diagram. The roller has one force acting upon it, and the pin has the two forces that are acting upon it. And again, we know we've got a 26.565 degree angle. So what we're going to do is we've got to calculate tension and compression forces acting upon each member and the reaction forces at each pin um, of our individual truss. So we're going to start at pin A as B, or B being the pivot point itself. So as if we're putting our finger at on B and everything's going to rotate. So C is pulling it clockwise and A then is going to have to be pulling counterclockwise to fight that. So the moment at A needs to equal the moment at B. So moment is force times distance equals force times distance. So at A, our force is the reaction force at pin A in the x direction. And then from our drawing, we got two units up. So we're going to use a distance of 2. And then we've got the distance from B to C being 4. B, C, A, all arbitrarily just named them whatever letters that work for us. You could call them X, Y, Z, whatever. We're just putting that. More important, looking at the distances. So... RAX, we divide both sides by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 times 4 means we've got reaction force at pin A in the x direction as being 40. Since C is pulling clockwise, that means at A we are pulling counterclockwise 40 units of force. So then we're looking still, big picture, looking at the different moments. And we notice we have two different forces at B. The forces, sum of all the forces in the x direction needs to equal zero. Sum of all the forces in the y direction needs to equal zero. So if A is going, the force in the x direction is going 40 to the left, that means at B, that force of x needs to be going to the right. And the same thing at pin B. If we've got 20 down at C, that means we've got to go 20 up at B. So now we're going to isolate and look at just pin B. So we're only going at the forces and the members that are interacting intersecting at that B. So we've got the reaction force at pin B in the X direction, and then we've got the reaction force at pin B in the Y direction. We have here member AB, so we have a force of member AB, we're going to assume under compression. So we have the reaction force of member AB, and that right there is in, sorry, the Y direction, and then we have BC, member BC, and we're going to have a force that's applying to that, applying compression. So we already know, right now what we know, we know 40 reaction force of BX, we got that from the moment. We've got the reaction force of BY being 20, and then we're going. Same formula again. Sum of all the forces in the X needs equal zero. Sum of all the forces in the Y needs equal zero. So if reaction force BX is going 40 to the right, that means reaction force of member BC needs to be 40 to the left. 40 to the left going towards that um, joint, so that means it's compression. Same thing with reaction forces in the Y direction. We've got 20 up from RBY that we already solved, so that means the reaction force at AB needs to be 20 down, compressing to that joint um, itself. So we'll go through. We got 20 compression for AB. We've got 40 compression at BC. So now we've got two thirds of it done. We've got to figure out what that hypotenuse is. So we're going to go and look at, let's go with pin C. We could have done it at pin A if we wanted to. Could have worked into some stuff there, but we'll look at C and solve it this way. We know we've got that original force pulling down or counterclockwise at 20 units. We know and have already calculated that the member BC has a force of 40, and it's under compression, so it's going to be pointing towards our um, joint that's there. And then we have AC, so we have the force of AC. Now, AC is a vector, so that's going down at an angle. So every vector has its components. So we go in with the green marker. We've got AC in the Y and then AC in the X. So in order to get the actual vector at the angle of AC, we need to find its two components, its X and its Y component. So we're looking at this itself. We've got the sum of all the forces in the X direction equals 0. 
and the sum of all the forces in the y directions equals zero. So let's look at all the sum of the forces in the x. We know that the, for the member of BC is 40 compression, which means then the x value of AC needs to be 40 in tension, pulling away. So then we look at sum of all the forces in the y. We knew the original force was pulling 20 down, so to make everything equal, that y component of AC needs to be 20 up. So now how do we calculate our AC? Well, Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can go ahead and take 20 squared, or I guess our r a c in the x direction, plus our r c y in the x direction, both of those squared, and then the square root. So 20 squared plus 40 squared, 20 squared gives us 4 with two zeros. So 400. 40 squared gives us 16 with two zeros, so 1,600. Sum of both of those is 2,000. So then we take the square root of 2,000, and then we'll calculate that reaction force of member AC, square root of 2,000. So later in the year, last year, you simplified those radicals. You pulled out the 100, which gave us then 10 root 20. Out of the 20, you can do 4 times 5, so pull that out. So you've got 20 root 5, or in a calculator, it'll go ahead and give you the final estimated value of 44.72. So that force of AC is 44.72. The two components of it are going up and to the left. It's pulling away from the member itself, so therefore it's under tension.